this is Stefan Pahl, I'm product manager for Magura and I want to show you how easy our forks are and how they are built up. First of all, we've got our forks here, so they are all built the same way, so suspension one side, damping the other side, and I'm going to show you how uh, you can disassemble the fork. So first of all, turn the fork horizontal to get access, oops, like this to get access to the lower bolts here. One bolt is covered with a rebound knob. Just pull off this knob, just press fit. And then with a five millimeter Allen key, you can unbolt this bolts here on both sides. Make sure the bolt head just loosens also. And then the rest can be done by hand. Now you can slide off the lower leg. Our 2012 forks have grease lubrication inside, so no danger of oil uh, pouring out because it's only grease and grease stays in place. So you can see here inside, it's a small amount of grease, our no new Forkmeister grease. So once you've got access to the lower part, you can uh, clean the stanchion tubes with a clean rag or you can even clean the dust seals and uh, wipers, uh, the bushings inside also with a clean rag and re-loop uh, re everything. For getting access to the, to the inner life of the fork we'll have to uh, take off the first the upper parts of the fork here. So make sure first that the, you release air all air caps have got a small pin here to release air. And um, to get access to the uh, hex below this blue knob, you just unscrew the blue knob. And with the Torx T8 tool, release the bottom knobs. I mean the bottom bolts. So take off the blue knob. And now with a 28 millimeter socket wrench or pipe wrench like this one, you can turn or start turning the top unit. So these are a few turns. And you can pull out the complete compression unit. I just let it hang a little bit so the oil drips back in place. I've got the same unit also here as a dry part. And here you can see some really nice details. So my, uh, the oil is flowing through these three ports normally, lifting up the shims here. And once I close with my, uh, re uh, with my dial on top, these holes here, the oil can only flow then through uh, the center port. And you see here, here's my blow off valve. So lifting up this blow off valve and the oil will come then through here getting out through these ports. But additionally, there's a really tiny small hole here. It has 0.3 millimeters of diameter. And this is responsible for, for our DLO dynamic effect. So a bit of oil can always flow through this port here in order to have the fork sag to the, your normal sag level. So you get better traction out of this. And that's the secret about DLO dynamic lockout. So now my unit has ripped off the oil completely now and I can take the fork and pour out the oil. Cycle the piston work so all, all, of the air, uh, all of the oil is now outside and I can uh, take now out the complete rebound unit.
putting the fork more or less horizontal. Now with the clip ring plier, I can take it like this here, so easier to see. Take out the clip ring. With a bit of pulling, I get the complete rebound unit out of my fork. So here you see compression unit, rebound unit, this compression piston goes into this cup here. So this would be the complete uh, damping unit on my fork. You've got here the knob on top and this is all hanging here in my fork. Or like this. Oops. Assembly of the fork is vice versa. So inserting the complete oops, the complete compression unit, uh, sorry, rebound unit. Make sure the lower part is really attached well into the extension tube. Assemble the clip ring. Make sure it really gets into the groove correctly by checking really if it's deep enough into it. Now you can turn your fork vertical again. Pour in the oil you had. Oops, like this. Depending on the fork, you've got different oil levels or oil volumes, but the oil level on all the forks is the same. So measuring oil level is rather easy. Take, uh, for example, a Allen key, dive to the oil level, you will, you will able to see it. And measure now the distance from the oil level to the top here. And this distance should be 110 millimeters. This is the same on all of our forks. You can vary this uh, oil volume by in increasing, uh, by decreasing this um, uh, air what is atop here but then you change also the properties of the forks so assembly of the oil side is again just what? bolting everything together the first turns by hand by hand and the rest with the tool and tighten up with 10 newton meters First a little bit by hand and then later on you can do it with a torque wrench. Air side, very similar. Just uh, release air, make sure the piston rod is moving really easily so there's no air pressure inside. And then release the top cap, top air cap. The air cap with the valve inside. There's a bit of lubrication oil inside the extension tube. So that's in order to avoid the oil dripping out. I turn it horizontal. I can remove also with the clip ring ply the clip ring on the lower part. And pull out the complete air unit. So you see here the air piston with the big seals. This is my negative spring, it's a single piece negative spring, we, this is new for 2012. And uh, my bottom out elastomer, so when the fork just bottom out completely, that the fork doesn't go on block. So this is my bottom out elastomer. So that's everything you see here. Make sure that when you install backwards the fork again, this enters rather easily. Oops. And uh, when installing, also make sure again that your clip ring plier, uh, your clip ring is in the right position. When you clip in, it makes it really snaps in correctly. Yeah. Add about five cc of lubrication oil if there's no oil inside the, uh, the air chamber. Close everything again.
and tighten up with 10 newton meters. I'm not showing it right now, but uh, with the torque tool, this is easy. So that's what is basically all uh, what can be done with the fork. On the internals, sliding on the lower leg, previous, previously uh, re-looped with the grease. Make sure that the hex always here on the piston rods with the, uh, that the edges are shown uh, in the riding direction and backwards. So, um, so uh, these hex will engage properly the hex inside the lower leg. They are faced also with a, a point uh, pointing forward and backwards. And then you can see Oops. That this hex has uh, that the piston rods have to be completely inside in the right position here. So what I'm seeing right now that my piston rod on the air side was not engaging properly. Now just by moving a little bit with the tool it engages properly. Then I can already screw in this bolt first by hand. Also on the other side, make sure you get the right one because this is a hollow bolt. This hollow bolt go goes on the rebound side where the rebound knob protrudes later on. Otherwise, if you turn it around, you will not be able to adjust your rebound anymore. And then tighten with six newton meter. Insert your rebound knob find the right position just by turning a little bit and that's already done so far. Now you can assemble your blue <laughs> dial on top of the of the uh, um, damping unit in the right position. There's some um, there's several holes inside here which match uh, on different positions here. So you will have to find the right position that uh, if you use a rebound, uh, sorry, a remote option, that this uh, bolt is facing more or less on a one or two o'clock position in order to attach the cable later on uh, correctly. So, uh, screw in the, these bolts again with your Torx T8 key, attach the blue cap on it again, Oops. No, I've got it. <laughs> Pump up the fork. There's a nice chart on the fork where you can read the air pressure required. This air pressure is an indication. It's not the final pressure you might use. Um, uh, once you've, uh, you found the right air pressure, you can write it down on the fork. So if you uh, pump it up again, you will always have the right pressure for your uh, required riding style, weight and so on. Mm -hmm.